In this video, we'll explore a little bit about why the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus works. First, let's remember what the Fundamental Theorem says. It says that the area under the curve y equals f of x from a to b, which is represented by this definite integral, that's equal to an antiderivative of that function with b and a plugged in, and then subtracted. So why does that work? Well, one way to think about why that works is to think about an area function. So in this case, we're going to define the area of x, capital A of x, to be the area under the curve y equals f of x from 0 to x. So as x moves back and forth, the area will either increase or decrease based on various properties of the function. So what's the derivative of that area function? What's the derivative of capital A of x? Well, if we think back to the definition of the derivative that we had way back when, before we learned all the derivative rules and shortcuts, a prime of x is approximately equal to a of x plus h minus a of x divided by h. And we can make that approximately equal to sine. We can make that an equal sign by taking the limit as h goes to zero. Another way of thinking about that is that this approximation gets better the smaller h is. So if h is really, really small, that is a very good approximation to this derivative. So the top of that fraction is equal to the pink area here, the area between x and x plus h. So now we've zoomed in on the pink area. So this figure on the left here is the same pink area from the previous slide. So the pink area on the top of my fraction on the left is approximately equal to just a rectangle whose base is h and whose height is f of x. The difference between these two figures is this gray area up here. That's the error in this approximation. That's how far off this approximation is. But if you think about h getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the smaller h is, the smaller this gray area will be, and the better this approximation will be. So that means that a prime of x gets closer and closer to f of x, the smaller h is. So in the limit as h goes to zero, a prime of x will actually equal f of x. So now we see that the integral from a to b of f of x is capital A of little b minus capital A of little a. Let's think about that for a second. We want the area from a to b. So what we can do is find the area from 0 to b. That's all of this area. But that's too much area. We just want the area from a to b. So we can get the area from a to b by subtracting the area from 0 to a. So if we subtract off the blue area here, then what we get is what we wanted, which is the area from a to b. So that's capital A of b minus capital A of a. So it looks like we're done here because this is essentially what the fundamental theorem says. It says that the integral from a to b is equal to an antiderivative with b plugged in, a plugged in, and then subtracted. But the fundamental theorem tells us that we can use whichever antiderivative we want. So why is that true? Why could we use any other antiderivative instead of just the specific area function? Well, if we used a different antiderivative, then the area function and that other antiderivative would only differ by a constant because all the antiderivatives look the same except for possibly that constant at the end. So that means with the algebra down here, you can take a look at that, we can get any other antiderivative, capital F of B minus capital F of A. So that's a little bit of insight into why the fundamental theorem of calculus works the way it does.